Please, by all means, all you, you may um, regale so, the audience. Well, actually, I'd like to say two things. One on this topic, one on another. Um, I've had a hard time adopting, adapting to the local culture. I came last night here to this room, um, and I sat down and I played a song, and I listened to other people sing back and forth, and I couldn't understand the rhythm of it. Um, and I felt outside and lost and kind of unwelcome. And that's none of your fault. Okay? Um, and today in my room, my, my wife, Angelina, who's been trying to encourage me, said, so what are we going to do? And I said, I have no desire to leave this room. Um, and she said, well, I'm going to go. And I'm going to, you know, look around and see what's going on. I said, you do that. And I stayed in my room. Um, and she came back a little while later. She said, I'd like you to come out, and I'd like you to meet Edith. <laughs> and I said, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> um, Ingus isn't in here right now, I guess. Um, and uh, I said, why? And she said, because he wants to talk to you. And so I said, so I said all right. And she brought, I sort of begrudging, I'm like, she's interfered in a thing, and I don't feel worried about it. You know, she's trying to do something nice for me, but I'm not really in the mood. You know, be nice. Well, <laughs> I'm an awful person and I admit it. <laughs> Everything nice yeah, about me is sitting right, right there. <laughs> Um, we had gone to visit him 
And uh, while we were there, a friend of ours named um, Jamal Damien Marcus and his lady came in. And Jamal is the kind of guy who, when he seizes upon a thing he wants to do, God remembers everyone he knows with questions. Right? <laughs> so when he decided he was going to fight, everyone he talked to that, and knew anything about fighting, he was like, and how do you do this? And how do you do this? And how do you do this? And he would sit there and listen to their answers over and over. And he liked nothing more than to get three or four people in the same room who did this thing and question them. And that's how I felt when I started. <laughs> yeah. So we're in this hospital room, my lady and I, and in walks um, one of the first prints of Kaidi. The first prints? The first prints. No. Now you're making it up. Uh, oh, you're right. The first prints of Kaidi. The first prints of Kaidi. decided. Hugh the Undecided. Hugh the Undecided. Yeah. Hugh the Undecided. And Martin the Temperate, who is anything but. <laughs> now, I will look directly at the camera when I say this, just in case it's so worldly. Martin, you earned my enmity. <laughs> um, so, Martin and Hugh and Charles are sitting there, and Jamal, knowing this is a golden opportunity to pick people's brains, says, So, how do you do this thing, this thing? And the conversation evolves. It's an argument about how you throw the dreaded option shot. <laughs> right? From here you can go anywhere. And how does it do? You loosen your hands, you tighten your hands, right? This is the old school fighting, which some of you may be too new to the SDA to, to remember, where we serve the soup. <laughs> Hugh says, well, I like to do this thing. And Charles says, well, I like to do this thing. And Martin says, no, no, you must do this thing. And they go round and round for a while. Now, I understand from Samia that you have a local term here that you use when fighters gather in a group and they start talking about fighting. And it's oh, the white hole. <laughs> Which I thought was freaking hilarious. Martin, who is anything but temperance, <laughs> uh, um, puts his hand on Hugh the undecided shoulder. Hugh has said, I like to do it this way. And Martin remembers this. He says, he says, that's why I'm a duke and you're not. <laughs> Among you will remember. 
Everest to the Rialto. Rialto. Oh. <laughs> Rialto. I said, I have written this little ditty. I'm going to find Rialto. Lo and behold, you cannot imagine how many dudes have opened this. <laughs> Because plausible deniability is the key to parody. <laughs>